plant microbe interaction actually this topic is very vast because so many microorganism which are interacting to the plant but today we'll discuss few of these microorganism which are especially interacting and benefiting to the plant so as you all, all you know the plants are non motile so they in, when they are interacting with the any microorganism they secrete some organic compound and these organic compound mainly favorable for microorganism growth and their association with the plant so when they secrete these compound various microbes are heavily heavily colonized with the plant and if you see there are two main region below ground region and above ground region where the microbes are associated with the plant but the major part where the microbes are associated with the plant is the below ground region where soil is the main reservoir of the microorganism and there are mainly two type of colonization which is observed in nature that is epiphytic and endophytic so microbe either epiphytically associated with the plant or endophytically associated with the plant whereas there are three main type of interaction which is observed in the plant by the microorganism first was one is a symbiotic second is associative and third one is pathogenic so there are major type that is symbiotic association where most of the microbes they are associated symbiotically and they have some beneficial role with the plant growth and life cycle whereas some microbes are associative not grow inside the plant and some microbes especially the fungi or bacteria they cause diseases they are pathogenic to the plant so today i am going to talk only on some positive interaction and one negative interaction so there are two main types of interaction observed in nature with the plant when the microbes are associative uh, positive interaction and negative interaction so in positive interaction i will be talking about the mycorrhizal fungi especially arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi and endophytic fungi along with the associative or endophytic bacteria second type of interaction is negative interaction where i'll just give an introduction about how the pathogen recognize the plant and how the plant recognize the pathogen and how the plant trigger their immunity okay so first organism that is mycorrhiza so if you see the mycorrhiza there are two main type of mycorrhiza are observed in nature one is endomycorrhiza and second is ectomycorrhiza whereas both the type are main special type there are some other sub type of mycorrhizal association which is observed in nature like ectendomycorrhiza orchid mycorrhiza ericoid mycorrhiza like that but these two are majorly seen in nature whereas if you see the ectomycorrhizal association which is mostly observed in majority of forest tree where they grow their hyperl mantle outside the root majority of ectomycorrhizal fungi are belonging to basidiomycota whereas endomycorrhiza their hypi or their mycelium which is growing inside the cortex and that's why they are called as endomycorrhiza so today i will be talking about the one of the type of endomycorrhiza 
that is arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. So there are 90% of the plant on the earth showing this type of association. And this endomycorrhiza belonging to a glomeromycota. Initially, this endomycorrhizal fungi was placed in a zygomycota and later on, based on small subunit molecular phylogenetic analysis of ribosomal RNA sequence, it was separated from zygomycota and placed into a new phylum that is glomeromycota. The name is given glomero means they produce a glomoid spore and that's why they were placed, they were named as a glomeromycota. So based on the SSU phylogenetic analysis, you can see in the first figure, it, the glomeromycota get form a separate clade from the asco, basidio and all other fungi. And that's why they were placed into new phylum, glomeromycota, with they produce four different order based on morphology as well as molecular phylogenetic analysis. They were forming a four different order. Now we can see exact what, what is the exact biology of these arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, these are the fungi, look similar with the fungi, but when they are infected to the plant, they doesn't behave like a pathogen. So you can see this is the difference between pathogenic fungi and mycorrhizal fungi. So first of all, I have shown a figure here, how the phytophthora, it is one of the biotropic pathogen, how it is infecting to the plant. So it first of all form the apressorium, then it will form a mycelium, then it will be producing hostoria, and then it causes cell death of the plant. Whereas a mycorrhiza generally produce a presodia-like structure, but it is, it is a hypophodium. And then their mycelium grow inside the root cell and it form first microscopic tree-like structure that is arbustule. And this arbustule is one of the main important structure through which the exchange of nutrient and carbon source will be takes place. And because of that reason, this arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi is called as symbiotically associated fungi. And after that, when the symbiotic association takes place through the arbuscule, it will be producing a small globule within the root that is nothing but the vesicle. And these vesicles are the carbon or sugar sucrose or lipid storage structure and that's why these fungi are called as arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi previously these are called as vesicular arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi but later there are some ambiguity some fungi produce only arbuscule some fungi only produce vesicle some fungi produce both arbuscule and vesicle and that's why they are later uh, given a name, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. So after, uh, before establishment, what exactly the signal they recognize from the plant? Mostly when the plant root are growing within the soil, they are mostly produce some exudate. And that exudate contain one of the phytohormone that is trigolactone. Actually, this trigolactone is previously first reported from a striga plant. And later on, this trigolactone name as a plant hormone. So mostly in the plant root exudate, this trigolactone is present. And the mycorrhizal fungal spore, they mostly recognize that trigolactone. When they recognize the strigolactone, the spore get germinate and form a hypal branching. So this is the first event where 
they recognize the root. And after that, in early phase, when they are infecting to the, at that time, in plant, the some events are happened. That is mostly the expression of strigolactin and salicylic acid defense response will be triggered. Later on, if you see in the late phase where the internal mycelium which grow intercellularly and it form arbuscule, that time the defensive mechanism of the plant is lower. So this is the phase where the mycorrhiza undergone a colonization phase or symbiotic phase. Okay. So in this way, the plant is behaving, behave, plant behave uh, with the uh, early and late phase of the mycorrhizal fungi. Now, if you see the li general life cycle, there is no sexual phase seen in the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. So, when we see uh, there will be a germination of spore by recognition of trigolactone through the hypopodium, the mycelium will get, uh, enter into the root cortex where they produce a first structure that is arbuscule and after that it will be producing a vesicle and outside the root within the soil they produce a mycelial mat that is called as extra radical mycelium and on that extra radical mycelium or we can call them as external mycelium they start producing sporulation and again, these spore recognize to a new root and again establish. So in this way, a, a sexual life cycle will be takes place in mycorrhizal fungi. Now, I will just talk about uh, how they are helping to the plant. Now you can see, this is the root. Mycorrhiza is established within the root. And there are hypi, which is growing uh, within the soil, uh, mostly the IP of these mycorrhiza grow beyond the nutrient absorptive region of the root and from where it will be absorbing water, nutrient especially phosphate and nitrogen and this nutrient and water transported through this extra radical mycelium and then it is released within the root. Okay, so in this way, they are transporting water and nutrient through their hypi and give it to the plant. But what will be the happening? How the exact exchange of carbon and nutrient is takes place? Like for example, if you see, these are the three cell. One is phloem, second is non-colonized cell, third one is colonized cell with the arbuscular mycorrhiza and fourth will be external mycelium. So mostly if you see the mycorrhizal fungi take near about 20% of the carbon source, whatever the photosynthesis takes place by the plant, from that 20% of the carbon source will be taken up by the fungi. Okay, so you can see in from the phloem, the sucrose is transport. It will be come out here in the non-colonized cell. There are some transporter that is mostly a sugar transporter present. Through this transporter, the sucrose, glucose and fructose is transfer from non-colonized cell to colonized cell where it is converted into two main form that is one is glucose and second one is two monoacyl glycerol so the glucose which is transfer from plant cell to the fungus through sweet gene sweet transporter Sweet is one of the transporter of sugar through which it is transported from plant cell to the fungal cell. Whereas uh, another 
टू मोनो असाइल ग्लिसरॉल विच इज ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्रॉम प्लांट सेल टू दंगल सेल थ्रू एस टी आर वन एंड टू ट्रांसपोर्टर एंड इट गेट कन्वर्ट इन टू टी जी ए दैट इज ट्राइग्लिसराइड सो ग्लूकोज एंड ट्राइग्लिसराइड दे आर ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्रॉम प्लांट सेल टू दंगस and then later on glucose get convert into glycogen and it is transport from internal mycelium to the external mycelium so in this way the fungus will take up the carbon source this carbon source is required for their growth so in the form of glycogen and triglyceride glycerol it will be taken up from the plant by the fungus now second will be the turn of fungus how the fungus will be giving something nutrient to the plant so you can see these are the first one cell is a, is a colonized plant cell this one is the external hypi which is growing within the soil so on the hypi there are some transporter present like nrt1 amt1 that is uh, nitrate reductase transporter ammonia transporter phosphate transporter zinc potassium and sulfur transporter so th through this transporter the ammonia nitrate inorganic phosphate zinc potassium sulfur which is export transport from soil to the hypi where mostly the ammonia and nitrate get convert into arginine and inorganic phosphate which convert into polyphosphate so as the polyphosphate is negative charge so it will be carries arginine and from external mycelium it transport toward the internal mycelium that is which is present in a plant root cell and then there are some transporter present on the cell wall of the internal mycelium they transport the ammonia inorganic phosphate zinc potassium and sulfate from fungus to the plant so in this way a uh, give and take mechanism will be takes place fungus will take carbon source for their growth and fungus will give a nutrient to the plant and in this type of association we can call them as a symbiotic association but after symbiotic association there are so many report showed that the when the mycorrhiza is associated with the plant root they are helping the plant under various biotic and abiotic stresses like i will just showing this is the mechanism by which the when the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi is associated with the plant root it modulate or it mostly uh, use as a biocontrol agent so there are four major modulation or ways through which the mycorrhizal fungi modulate the defensive mechanism first one is the direct competition so mostly when they are associated with the plant root they are compete with other organism so that the there should be a competition for infection site as well as nutrient second thing is that they alter rhizosphere interaction so mostly when the mycorrhiza is associated with the root they exude some exudate the plant root secrete some exudate which is mostly favorable for a useful microorganism a third thing is that as the mycorrhizal fungi is associated with the plant root they taken up a major nutrient like phosphate nitrogen zinc potassium so it enhance the nutrition capability of the plant 
leads to enhancing the vigor of the plant and which leads to enhance the tolerance and last will be the induce a systemic resistance systemic resistance means there are two type of resistance seen in plant when any pathogen is attack one is localized resistance second one is systemic resistance localized resistance means a uh, one pathogen which is infect to a one part of the plant there will be enhance the defensive mechanism only limited to that part that is localized resistance systemic resistance means if the pathogen is attack on the root the plant trigger their defensive mechanism all over the plant body that is systemic resistance so when the plant is mycorrhiza is associated with the plant uh, there will be triggering or induce systemic resistance of the plant part all over the body so these are the four mechanism we can call through which the plant cope up with the biotic stress condition especially we can say a nematode uh, infestation likewise the mycorrhizal fungi also uh, alleviate the abiotic stress condition biotic and abiotic stress condition through uh, producing some antioxidant re defense response so like for example under you can see here a comparison of non colonized and colonized a uh, plant so especially when a plant is not colonized with mycorrhizal fungi the plant is compromised with that particular stress condition so there will be when any stress condition there will be a generation of excessive reactive oxygen species when these reactive oxygen species are generated in larger quantity they are the plant cell undergone program cell death but when the mycorrhiza is associated with the plant there are some antioxidative enzymes especially superoxide dismutase catalase peroxidase glutathione reductase and ascorbate peroxidase these are the antioxidant enzyme they are generated in larger quantity and they are mostly scavenging the reactive oxygen species so the main important role of this antioxidant enzyme is a uh, cope up or to decrease the program cell death so in this way the mycorrhizal plant alleviating the stress condition by enhancing the antioxidative mechanism so another important is or you of mycorrhiza in uh, above and below ground level for herbivore induced plant ola type so if you see in any in nature if the mycorrhiza is not associated with the plant if you see the first plant which is having a uh, no association of mycorrhizal fungi and these second plant which is showing the association of mycorrhizal fungi so mostly if you see uh, there are two interaction below ground level interaction and above ground level interaction in below ground level interaction some root herbivore which are infect infesting to the root at the same time there are some endoparasite nematode especially entomopathogenic nematode they are attracted and they are mostly involved in trapping the root herbivore at the same time the uh, hormone mediated defensive response especially salicylic acid and jasmonic acid defensive response will be trigger all over the plant at the same time if you see 
some leaf herbivore which are attacking on the plant and when these leaf herbivore is attacking to the plant the plant itself produce some herbivore induced plant volatile these are nothing but the dmnt tmtt the main role of these volatile or we can call them as a terpenoid the main role of these terpenoid they have a deterrent activity against herbivore whereas when these volatile or this terpenoid compound which is produced by the plant it attract some insect carnivore okay so this is the general mechanism seen in nature what will be the happening in the when the plant is associated with the mycorrhiza first thing is that when the plant which is colonized with the mycorrhizal fungi it first of all enhance the nutrient uptake when they enhance the nutrient uptake the photosynthetic rate will be increased and then there will be increasing the biomass of the plant along with that there will be increasing the trichome contained on the leaf when the trichome contained is highest on the leaf there are some herbivore which are attracted for herbivore interaction at the same time when the herbivore is attracted there will be a blend of terpenoid that is dxs that is 1 deoxy d xylulose 5 phosphate synthase it is one of the enzyme precursor which is produced in larger quantity through the mevalonic acid pathway and it trigger the enhancement of dxr that is 1 deoxy d xylulose 5 phosphate reducto isomerase these are the two main volatile compound additionally produce than the tmtt and dmnt so this is one of the uh, mechanism of reinforcement of accumulation or production of more terpenoid by the plant when mostly they are associated with the mycorrhizal fungi so what will be the happening when the these dxs and dxr is upregulated they attracted more the insect carnivores and these insect carnivores are attracted or they are attack on the aphid or the leaf herbivore okay this is the case in above ground level understood what i am saying okay uh, so do you understood what there are two thing first one is below ground level there is happening something different when the mycorrhiza is associated with the plant and in above ground level there will be increasing the blend of herbivore induced plant volatile when the plant is not associated with the mycorrhiza only some herbivore induced plant volatile like tmtt and dmnt are produced but when the plant is associated with the mycorrhiza additionally dxs dxr and hmgr7 these all these are the volatile terpenoid compound and the main role of terpenoid compound is deterrent activity against the herbivore along with that they attracted the insect carnivore towards the plant so the insect carnivore they are again trapping the leaf herbivore this is in the case of above ground level in below ground level what will be the happening uh, there is one more terpenoid compound that is beta cabophyllin which is secreted by the fungal hyphae 
and these beta karyophyllin which is mostly again you can say there will be a root herbiuridis infested by the plant when the beta karyo when the root herbiuri infested to the plant root they secrete a beta karyophyllin this beta karyophyllin attracting the endoparasite nematode these endoparasite nematodes are entomopathogen entomo means they are mostly pathogenic to the root herbivore okay so in above ground level and below, below ground level there are some additional things which are produced by the plant due to mycorrhization and this is uh, one of the benefit of the plant to cope up with the herbivory infestation along with that when a uh, root herbivory or leaf herbivory they are infested to the plant that time the salicylic acid and jasmonic acid mediated defense response will be triggered in a plant you can you can see there will be another third plant what will be the happening in the third plant which is not colonized by the mycorrhiza but the mycelium of the second plant which is connecting this third third plant with this mycorrhizal plant so what will be the happening whatever the interaction takes place in this mycorrhizal plant because of that reason the prime defense response you can see this yellow is denoted by prime defense response is triggered because this hype which send the message to these periphery plant that some pathogen which is attack on my this plant so that they trigger their prime defense response prime defense response means uh defense activation of defense response before a uh, pathogen attack that is called as prime defense response means plant already trigger their defensive mechanism before a pathogen attack that is called as prime defense response so that whenever the pathogen is attacking on this plant they are already uh, trigger their defensive response and they are alleviate that defensive mechanism so another important thing is heavy metal absorption so mostly there are so many heavy metal present in the soil and the plant doesn't uh, cope up with that heavy metal stress condition but uh, mycorrhiza have some mechanism through which they are alleviating these heavy metal stress condition so initially when the plant they are associated or we can say they are uh, having or they are first uh, cope up with the stress condition or they are mainly uh, means some plant which are present in the soil where which is having some heavy metal initially they chilled that heavy metal they have some mechanism so first of all they secrete some chelating agent like histidine that chelating agent bind to the heavy metal and then they transport from cell wall to the plasma membrane and then these heavy metals are sequestered in a vacuole of the cell but beyond the concentration of heavy metal the plant doesn't sequester heavy metal within the plant root or shoot whereas the mycorrhiza have some peculiar mechanism through which they detoxify the heavy metal so plant also secrete some chelating agent like glomalin glomalin is one of the glycoprotein 
which is mainly secreted by the mycorrhizal hypi. It's a sticky substance. So the heavy metal will attach to these glomalin. These glomalin along with the heavy metal transport from cell wall to the plasma membrane of the hypi is transported from external hypi to the internal and through the arbuscule they are released within the plant. So in the through the arbuscule they are sequestered within the plant cell. So this is one of the mechanism through which the fungal mycorrhizal hypi they are detoxify the heavy metal contamination. Okay, so these are the so multifunctional role played by these mycorrhizal fungi. Okay, so these mycorrhizal fungi are mostly uh, obligate symbiont. Obligate means they are requiring the host plant for their growth. So first of all, there is need to culturing of mycorrhizal fungi under either in vivo or in vitro condition. So there is a special type of technique that is wet sieving and decanting method through which we can isolate these mycorrhizal fungal spore. Here are some of the substrate and host plant which are mostly used for the inoculum production of the mycorrhiza. So mostly people are using, doing the culture based on substrate based mycorrhizal inoculum production as well as substrate free inoculum production. So here is the isolation method for spore, their surface sterilization and this one is the soil based or substrate based method for inoculum production of mycorrhiza. So on the root of this plant, this mycorrhizal fungi will grow and then you can use this as a inoculum. But mainly in the soil or substrate, there are so many contaminants. So most probably there will be a contamination occurred during the inoculum production by using substrate base or soil based inoculum. So people are doing some substrate free cultivation like nutrient film technique. But in this case, there will be contamination of some uh, bacteria or algae. So nowadays, people are doing a root organ culture or in vitro culture of mycorrhiza. So mostly uh, similar with the MS media, people are using tissue culture MS media for tissue culture. Similarly, there will be some modification in MS. Then they have given the name MSR, modified strulu and roman medium, which mainly containing similar content, which are similar in the MS medium, like uh, one stock of macro element, micro element, vitamin, like that. Then this is general procedure for surface sterilization of spore. I will not go in detail with this. I will just go through the methodology. Then people are mostly using carrot root for in vitro cultivation. So mostly there will be a one uh, bacteria, agrobacterium rhizogeny. Actually, it's a pathogen. So people are generally use this agrobacterium rhizogeny for biotechnological purpose. So people are infecting these bacteria to the uh, uh, carrot disc so that on the carrot disc, so many hairy roots are occur. These hairy roots are used for association with the mycorrhiza. This is the general procedure for spore isolation and surface sterilization. So these surface sterilized spore will be inoculate on a single MSR media, then within two to three days, these spores are germinated. Then again, these spores 
are kept inoculated at the vicinity of the root so that these spore get germinate and colonize this root. You can see here a root after three to four months, this root will be grow. Along with that, on that root, the mycorrhiza will grow and you we get a mycorrhizal fungal spore as well as root with mycorrhizal association. So this is the way through which people are doing the cult mass cultivation, in vitro mass cultivation of these mycorrhizal fungi. So this is the procedure for isolation of fungal spore from the media. By adding 10 millimolar citrate buffer into the media, the media will be dissolved and then the spore will be separated from the media. Then people are doing subculturing of these roots which are colonized by the mycorrhizal fungi and do the mass production of these mycorrhiza. And people are using these mycorrhiza as a biofertilizer as they have a multifunctional role in the plant growth and elevation of various biotic and abiotic stresses. Now I'll be talking about uh, another interaction of the plant that is endophyte. Endo means uh, microbes which is growing inside the plant but they doesn't cause any symptoms that is called as endophyte. The main difference between pathogen and endophyte is that pathogen generally cause disease and they form a particular morphological symptoms. Whereas endophyte which are not forming any type of symptoms, they are growing happily within the plant and they have some beneficial interaction with the plant. Especially they are producing same type of secondary metabolite produced by the plant and that given to the plant. So in this way, they increase the resistance of the plant which cope up with the various biotic and abiotic resistance, abiotic stress. Well, there was uh, the first discovery of endophytic fungi was discovered in mostly 1993. There was one plant, Taxus uh, bravifolia, from which one endophytic fungus which is isolated, that is Taxomyces andrini, and that Taxomyces andrini produce a Taxol. So this is one of the, all you know, the anti-cancerous compound Taxol, mostly produced by the Taxus plant. But, but this endophyte is also produced a Taxol. So the discovery was started and so many people have working on especially medicinal plant isolation of endophyte and checking their same medicinally important compound present in the endophyte or not. Along with that, there are so many uh, so many mechanisms through which the endophyte are enhancing the resistance in the plant. You see the classification of fungal endophyte. Fungal endophyte is not a very special group of the fungus. They are belonging to either Ascomycota, Basidiomycota, Omycota, or Zygomycota. And they are especially growing intercellularly within the plant, intracellularly within the plant. So they do not have any special type of fungus. They are belonging to these four groups, especially belonging to Ascomycota and they are growing inside the plant host which is a non-host. Okay, so you can see in nature there will be a, some ecological balances taken up by the plant. Like for example, if you see first, if 
the plant is not benefited from the fungus but fungus is some benefited something from the plant that situation we can call them as a parasitism whereas in second case where both the partner plant and fungus is not benefited from each, each other that is called as antagonistism whereas third the plant is benefited from the fungus but fungus is not benefited from the plant that stage is called as exploitative phase whereas in the one fourth phase where both the partner showing the balance means fungus get something from the plant Fla plant get something from the fungus so there will be equal distribution or there will be equal uh, quantity of benefit taken up from both the partner that balance situation is called as endophytism so that the endophytic fungi doesn't have special group when a plant and fungus they maintain the balance of given tech mechanism that situation is called as endophytism so endophytes are nothing but the previously reported pathogen also okay so if that balance is disrupted the fungus will go in the direction of pathogen okay so plant and fungus they maintain that balance of endophytism okay so when the plants are associated or the fung endophytes which are associated with the plant they have a multifaceted interaction with the host plant like for example when they are associated with the plant they reduce the herbivory when they are associated with the plant they plant already trigger their ethylene or jasmonate mediated defense response so they already produce phytoalexin pathogen related protein some plant defensing so this is we can call them as a prime defense response is already trigger and when the pathogen is infected or attack the plant is defense against that pathogen third interaction is mostly whatever the reactive oxygen species are generated within the plant the endophyte will be producing some antioxidant enzyme like superoxide dismutase catalase peroxidase hydroperoxide reductase glutathione reductase yes, transferase and these antioxidant enzyme detoxify or neutralize the reactive oxygen species so it protect the plant cell under oxidative stress in other word we can say there are again a uh, four different mechanism through which the endophytes are defense against the pathogen so mostly you can see the red color hype is of endophytic fungi this pink color hype is of pathogenic fungi first of all these endophytic hype they are producing some enzyme metabolites or effector which trigger the activation defensive reaction of the plant cell along with that the pathogen which is infected to particular cell in that case where they are increasing the ros so it induce the resistance through various mechanism second mechanism is mycoparasitism mycoparasitism means the endophytic fungal hype which form some coiling or it will be secreting some enzyme like chitinase beta 13 glucanase which mostly burst or which mostly rupture the cell wall of pathogen and it will be taking nutrient from the pathogen that is mycoparasitism third one is a 
endophytic fungi mostly produce some antimicrobial protein metabolite or some uh, toxin like hydrogen cyanide which inhibit the growth of the pathogen fungi pathogen and the fourth mechanism is competition so mostly the endophytic fungi grow rapidly it compete with the pathogenic fungi for nutrient and other resources such as shelter and it will be inhibiting the growth of the pathogenic fungi so these are the four different mechanism through which it induce the systemic resistance of the plant yes, nowadays sir. people are mostly concentrating this endophytic fungi for getting a particular medicinal compound so i i will be giving i have given one example of uh, notopodiitis pneumoniana it will be mostly producing one of the main anti cancerous compound that is campotensin so uh, this is a uh, one report from scientific report that they have isolated 132 fungal endophyte from notopodiitis pneumoniana out of which 94 endophytes they are producing campotensin and out of 94 there are two endophyte alternaria alstroemeri and alternaria bonsai they are the two main endophyte which are producing highest quantity of campotensin and they check these campotensin produced by the endophyte for anti cancerous activity and they got a good anti cancerous activity of against breast cancer lung cancer ovary cancer and colon cancer so as the endophyte which is having a multifunctional role like they have a role in plant protection disease resistance they are producing so many pharmacological important compound they are also used as a, a bio fertilizer they are inhibiting the growth of the plant pathogen there are mostly produce some volatile antibiotic they are producing some antimicrobial compound so there is need to isolation of these fungal endophytes so this is just a, a road map of how to collect isolate and identify the endophyte like you can just surface sterilize these endophyte sorry plant inoculate them on a media so whatever the mycelium which is come out from the cut end that will be subculture and mostly for fungi you can identify you by using its region of ribosomal dna after that you can do the this is just a road map of how to um, analyze that sequence and then identify then do the liquid culture and then go for the various technique for metabolite characterization like either you go with the if you know the uh, known compound of this plant you can go to with the hplc or uv hplc or if you don't have don't know the actual compound then you go with the nmr like that understood so here i'll just giving a, an example of one plant endophyte that is one medicinal plant that is embelea ripe which is collected from coina some of the my white mycelium which is come out from this curtain and that mycelium will be growing in the uh, slant which is mostly produce having a xyleria endophyte then we did the lcms analysis so we got so many pharmacological important compound like glimidin thio azacited in leucotriene chlorizin galopamil ditotoxigenin like that now we will see the beneficial interaction of bacteria i'll be only talking about the 
below ground level bacteria. So there are two main type of bacteria, either associative bacteria or endophytic bacteria. And these associative or endophytic bacteria are again have fall into two categories that is plant growth promoting bacteria and biocontrol bacteria. So some bacteria, they are mostly having some plant growth promoting activities like nitrogen fixation, phosphate solubilization, production of phytohormones, production of siderophore. These are called as plant growth promoting bacteria. Some bacteria, they are mostly producing some allelochemical, some lytic enzyme so that the plant defensive mechanism will be induced and they are mostly involved in inhibition of pathogen attack and they are called as biocontrol bacteria. Some bacteria are mostly important for uh, remediation of heavy metal. These are called as rhizo, um, that we can call them as a rhizo remediation. Okay, so I'll be starting with the plant growth promoting uh, bacteria. This is generalized uh, figure of how the bacteria, when they are associated endophytically with the plant root, they have two main mechanisms, that is plant growth promoting activity and biocontrol strategy. Now you can see when they are enter these endophytic bacteria enter into the plant root, they produce some endophytic, endophytic enzyme like pectinase and chitinase and cellulase. These enzymes which degrade the plant cell wall and then these bacteria enter into the plant root. When they enter into the plant root, these bacteria showing some plant growth promoting strength like phosphate solubilization, production of some siderophore, ammonia, production of some phytohormone like IAA, gibberellin, cytokinin, fixation of atmospheric or nitrogen like that. So all these are the plant growth promoting activity. When these bacteria uptake these things or solubilize phosphate or fix nitrogen or produce some uh, phytohormone, they are most, the plant undergone uh, elevate the various uh, biotic stress condition. So like the plant secrete some prolines and sugar, exopolysaccharide, then heat shock protein, glycine betaine, dehydrine, some phytohormone. All these are the compounds which are produced by the plant. So it with the plant pop up with the abiotic stress condition. One more important thing is that now you can see this one is ACC. ACC is one of the enzyme which convert into or which which is the precursor enzyme which convert or which they produce a ethylene. So whatever the ACC, which is produced by the plant, which is taken up by the bacteria. Now you can see this green one is the plant cell. This one is the bacteria cell. So this ACC, which is taken up by the bacteria cell and this ACC, there will be a one enzyme produced by the bacteria that is ACC deaminase. So these ACC deaminase, convert ACC in and produce two compounds that is ammonia and alpha ketobutyrate. If the ACC is produced in a large quantity in the plant, it will be producing ethylene and ethylene is one of the stress hormone which gives stress, which increase the stress in the plant. So to inhibit the ethylene production, the bacteria will take ACC and it convert into ammonia and alpha ketobutyrate. And that ammonia again 
taken up by the plant as a nitrogen source. So there are two benefits from the ACC deaminase producing bacteria. First one is that it will be taking ACC and convert into ammonia and alpha ketobutyrate. So the level of ethylene is already reduced in the plant. So no stress. Second thing is that the ammonia which is produced by conversion of ACC through ACC deaminate, that ammonia is again taken up by the plant as a nitrogen source. Second thing is that the tryptophan which is present in the plant, it convert IAA or bacteria. Tryptophan is the precursor of IAA. So it produce IAA and that IAA is also taken up by the plant cell. So it will be three benefits. First is uh, lowering the ethylene. Second is uptaking the ammonia and third will be production of IAA. So these plant growth promoting activities along with production of ACC deaminase which mostly useful for enhance or management of abiotic stress. Okay. Second thing is that these endophytic bacteria mostly produce some lytic enzymes, toxin, antibiotic, some other compound like hydrogen cyanide and siderophore. I will be in next lecture, in next slide, I will be take, uh, I will just discussing what are the role of the siderophore and all. So the main thing is that these compound inhibiting the growth of pathogen. Along with that, the bacteria induce a systemic resistance mediated by some phytohormone like salicylic acid, jasmonic acid cycle and suppression of ethylene. So the cumulative effect of these bacteria, it will be managing the abiotic stress and it will be also managing the biotic stress. So the bacteria have multifunctional role. Either they are used as a plant growth promoting activities or they are also used as a biocontrol strategy. Okay. I will be going uh, go through the uh, some plant growth promoting uh, activities of bacteria, how they are isolating. Now you can see this is the general procedure for isolation of uh, soil bacteria by serial dilution. Then identify morphologically by gram, whether the gram positive or gram negative. Then for correct identification, you can go for the 16S RDNA molecular analysis. Okay, Then you can go with uh, some plant growth promoting state like there will be a one major important uh, nutrient that is nitrogen and mostly the nitrogen is fixed by three ways first one is atmospheric fixation second is industrial fixation and third large most larger fixation of by the plant that is biological nitrogen fixation so there are two main type of nitrogen fixing bacteria which are available or present in the nature. One is a non-symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria. Second one is symbiotic fixing bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria. Well, well-known example is rhizobium. So which is root nodulating symbiotically associated bacteria. So they are mostly fixing uh, atmospheric or soil nitrogen in the form of ammonia or nitrate and they are giving to the plant. So the isolation method for rhizobium that is there is one yeast extract mannitol agar on which you can inoculate the root nodule, surface sterilized root nodule. So you get the pink color colony that is nothing but the rhizobium. Whereas 
for isolation of other bacteria you can grow them in a jensen semi solid medium jensen semi solid medium containing nitro without nitrogen so that those bacteria which are capable of taking a atmospheric nitrogen only these bacteria will grow on this jensen media so those bacteria which are growing on the jensen media that means they have capacity to fix the atmospheric nitrogen and these are the non symbiotic nitro atmospheric nitrogen fixing bacteria we can see so we can isolate the rhizobium symbiotic and non symbiotic bacteria by using these two different media i will just go through again there will be another phosphate solubilizing bacteria which are mostly burkholderia enterobacter pantoia pseudomonas and citrobacter so these are mostly if you wish to isolate these phosphate solubilizing bacteria we can grow them in a pico husky medium so if the bacteria showing the zone of inhibition that means the actually the pico husky medium containing the phosphate insoluble form of phosphate if they form a zone of inhibition that means these bacteria are solubilizing the insoluble phosphate present in the medium that we can call them as a phosphate solubilizing bacteria whereas there are various mechanism through which the bacteria solubilize phosphate especially they are producing some compound like exopolysaccharide some enzymes like phytase acid and alkaline phosphatase whereas they are mostly solubilize the phosphate under lowering the ph so there are some compound like inorganic acid excretion of surplus h plus ion or production of some organic acid into the medium or in the soil and which gives reduction in the ph of the soil leads to solubilization of the another is some bacteria which are producing a phyto uh, uh, phyto hormone so mostly in the bacteria uh, there are three main type of pathways seen uh, by the by synthesis of ia like the precursor is tryptophan and there are three main by synthesis pathway through which the ia are produced and which are absorbed in the bacteria so this is the general procedure for isolation of ia producing bacteria so if you wish to isolate the ia producing bacteria you can grow them in a in a media then inoculate again add in a salkovaski reagent if the salkovaski reagent produce a pink coloration that means they are producing ia okay. next one is scc deamine is back bacteria so mostly as i told you this scc deamine is is one of the enzyme which mostly break down the scc that is scc is one amino cyclopropane one carboxylase synthase so this scc is produced this is the precursor of ethylene so if it will be produced in a larger quantity it will be producing ethylene and as you know the ethylene is one of the stress hormone along with they are used in various physiological process this also used as a stress hormone and if the accumulation of ethylene is more in plant it which gives the stress so to minimize the production of ethylene the H acc d amine is which convert acc that is one amino cyclopropane one carboxylase synthase to ammonia and alpha ketobutyrate so 
there are some acc deaminase producing bacteria are also present in the nature so this is general procedure for isolation of acc deaminase producing bacteria this one is the potassium solubilizing bacteria we can grow the bacteria on alexandro medium if it will be showing some zone of inhibition that means it will be solubilizing the potassium present in the medium so these are the some bacteria which are already play a role in plant growth promoting trait in the nature so for a biotechnological purpose or for industry purpose you can isolate these bacteria by using this various method now i'll be giving uh, one mechanistic uh, example how the endophytic bacteria pop up with the plant immune system now you can see this first this one is the plant cell this one is the bacterial cell this one is the pathogen cell so first thing is that the bacteria which showed various plant growth promoting state that is it will be fixing the nitrogen it will be solubilizing the phosphate it will be fixing the iron or chelating the iron it will be producing so many phytohormone and give it to the plant so plant increase their growth second thing is that whatever the amino cyclopropane one carboxylase produced in the plant it is a precursor of ethylene so this acc taken up by the sorry this acc deaminase produced by the bacteria and it convert acc to the ammonia and alpha ketobut ketobutyrate and this ammonia taken again taken up by the plant so the production of ethylene is less which ultimately lower the stress condition now third thing is that the bacteria producing some cell wall degrading enzyme like chitinase beta 13 gluconase which break down the cell wall of the pathogen third thing is that the bacteria produce some compound like hydrogen cyanide bacteriocin this bacteriocin is proteinaceous or peptide peptide toxin mainly produced by the bacteria and which mostly inhibit or toxic to the pathogenic cell so the hydrogen cyanide and bacteriocin which is inhibiting the growth of the pathogen another important thing is that bacteria mainly mainly produce some siderophore i'll be giving uh, in another slide i'll be showing how to how the siderophore and si hydrogen cyanide will be bacteria will be produced so these siderophore are the iron chelating compound generally iron is mainly mainly uh, uh, used for growth of the microorganism any microorganism beneficial microorganism or pathogenic microorganism <coughs> so whatever the iron which is chelated by the siderophore so there should be competition for getting the iron from the soil so that the pathogen doesn't get iron for their growth so which ultimately inhibit the growth of pathogen another important thing is that corum quenching there are two terminologies corum quenching and corum sensing corum sensing means a uh, adjacent cell either bacteria or pathogen or fungus they have some communication and that communication is responsible for growth of the cell of microorganism so through corum sensing the either 
bacteria or pathogenic cell they are growing in a good amount well the quorum quenching is the inhibition of quorum sensing they produce some compound through which it inhibit the quorum sensing so it ultimately disrupt the uh, interrelationship or intercommunication of the cell of the pathogen or any microbe so quorum quenching inhibit the quorum sensing of the pathogen so the cumulative effect of production of hydrogen cyanide bacteriocin bacteriocin siderophore production quorum quenching cell wall degrading enzyme which ultimately inhibit the pathogen okay another thing is that prime defense so mostly the when the bacteria associated with the plant the plant itself trigger their immunity or trigger their defensive response it will be either phytohormone mediated or antioxidative mediated defense response that is called as priming defense response is triggered before pathogen attack so it ultimately inhibit the pathogen growth so cumulative effect of plant growth promotion activity production of some chemical compound like hydrogen cyanide bacteriocin siderophore cell wall degrading enzyme acc deaminase quorum quenching which ultimately inhibit the growth of the pathogen now just going into uh, how to isolate this siderophore and hydrogen cyanide producing uh, bacteria like you can grow a bacteria on uh, chrome media so <laughs> if the media showing some zone of inhibition that means these bacteria are producing siderophore so mostly the bacteria which scavenge the iron present in the chrome azure yes agar that means they are producing a siderophore whereas in hydrogen cyanide producing bacteria they are mostly producing some compound hydrogen cyanide those bacteria producing hydrocyan cyanide you can see here the at these this is the petri plate and at the uh, below the inside of the petri plate lid the uh, filter paper wet filter paper will be attached and the bacteria which is growing on the petri plate if they are producing hydrogen cyanide the color of this filter paper will change from yellow to light brown or reddish brown that means these bacteria are producing the hydrogen cyanide okay now i'll be talking about uh, also i already talk about some beneficial interaction interaction of my uh, plant with uh, mycorrhiza with the plant which is a beneficial interaction endophyte with the plant which is a beneficial interaction some bacteria especially below ground level bacteria which showed some plant growth promoting trait and some biocontrol strategy that is also a beneficial interaction now i'll be talking about the pathogenic interaction or negative interaction so especially i'll be talking about the concept of pathogen disease and one general concept how the plant or fungus recognize the plant or plant recognize the fungus and how the disease enter or pathogen enter into the plant and they cause uh, triggering the various defensive mechanism so you can see what exactly the disease disease is a uh, any abnormalities or any physiological abnormalities 
caused by the microorganism, either fungus or bacteria or any other or viruses that we call them as a disease. So the uh, science or the branch, we study these abnormalities or disease that we can call them as a pathogen, sorry, pathology. And the pathogen is the organism which mainly cause that disease or abnormality. Again, I have shown some terminologies like infection means establishment of parasitic relation between pathogen and the plant after entry into the plant cell that we can call them as an infection. And after establishment of that parasitic relationship, the pathogen cause a particular morphological abnormalities seen by the eye, our eyes that we can call them as a symptom. Then syndrome, a set of symptoms characterizing a disease, we can collective call them as a syndrome. Now, if you see specifically for fungus, there are various three main type of pathogen observed in nature. That is necrotropic, biotropic and hemibiotropic. Necrotropic pathogen means a pathogen, first of all, when they are entered into the plant cell, they are causing or they first of all dies the plant cell and then they are taking the food material from that dead cell. That is called as necrotropic. Biotropic means the pathogen which is growing intercellularly within the plant cell. Then they produce a particular structural feature. We can call them as a hostoria. And through hostoria, they take a food material from the living cell. That we can call them as a biotropy. Hemibiotropy means initially pathogen behave as a necrotrop, later on it behave as a biotrop. That is, we can call them as a chemibiotropic. When uh, any pathogen, when enter into the plant, so there are mainly three main mode of penetration and invasion by the pathogenic fungi. First one is direct penetration. Second one is penetration through some nat natural opening like stomata, lent lenticel, hydrothode, etc. And third one is penetration through some natural wood. So these are the three main entry points through which the pathogen will be entered. Now I will be talking about pathogen recognition and interaction. Now you can see uh, there will be this yellow color box is nothing but the pathogen. This one is the plant cell. So there are some plant recognition factors and pathogen recognition factors which are present. Plant recognition factors are PRR that is pattern recognition factor which are present on the cell wall of the plant. Second one is R protein. You can see this yellow color which is present which are called as resistant protein which is present within the plant cell. So these are the rec pathogen recognizing factor. In pathogen there will be P AMPs or MAMPs that is pathogen associated molecular pattern as well as microbe associated molecular pattern. So these blue colors are nothing but the pathogen or microbe associated molecular pattern. So when the pathogen which is landing on the plant cell, that pathogen is recognized by the PRR, 
which is located at the cell wall. When the pathogen enter or landing on the plant cell, they secrete some effector. So these blue color, nothing but the effector. And these effector is sensed, first of all, by either by PRR or by the resistant protein. First defense, first line of defense is pathogen trickier. When the pathogen is enter or recognize the plant cell, a uh, two main immunity response will be triggered. First line res Im, uh, uh, defense response will be triggered. First is we can call them as a PTI. That is MEMP's mediated pattern triggered immunity. That means when the piece is recognized by the PRR, it will be triggered the pattern MEMP's mediated pattern triggered immunity. And it will be triggered the MAP kinase cascade gene expression. So it mostly triggered the, the MAP kinase. It's one of the uh, uh, transcription factor. And there are so many genes involved in this MAP kinase. And defense related genes which are triggered when the PTI, that is pattern trigger immunity will be. Another thing is, so this is the first line defense. when the MAMPs of the pathogen is recognized by the PRR. Okay. Second is that when pathogen enter into the plant cell, it will be producing some effector. Okay. So these effector is recognized by resistant protein. And these effector are bind by the resistance protein. Okay, when they are bind to these resistance protein, the hypersensitive response of the plant cell will be triggered and it will be triggering a second line of defense response that is effector trigger immunity. Okay, so these effector trigger immunity will be enhanced, which efflux the Hydroxyl ion, potassium ion, and influx of calcium ion, which leads to increase the hypersensitive response of the plant. Hypersensitive response means there will be generation of ROS, that is reactive oxygen species. When there will be a generation of ROS, the plant undergone program cell death. Plant, plant itself dies their own cell which is more infected by the pathogen, okay? At that time, there will be increasing the production of lignin and calos of the adjacent cell, so that the adjacent cell, they are producing more lignin and calos, so that this pathogen doesn't invade their adjacent cell, okay? This is the second line of defense response. After HR will be induced, there will be a third line of defense response will be triggered. That is hormonal mediated immunity. So mostly in necrotropic pathogen, the JA mediated defense response will be triggered. In biotropic pathogen, the salicylic acid mediated defense response will be triggered. And these hormonal mediated defense response will be triggering the expression of PR gene. PR means pathogen related genes. They mainly produce a pathogen related protein. And these pathogen related protein 
are mostly involved in defensive mechanisms. Okay. Another thing is that when the HR will be produced or HR will be induced, which cause a generation of or trigger the hormonal mediated uh, defense response. At the same time, later on, if the pathogen is not controlled by first line, second line, third line, that time it will be the plant itself triggered or the hormonal mediated defense response triggered the systemic acquired resistance that is SAR. Third, we can say. So, which mostly produce some compound like phytoalexine and chitinase. So, these phytoalexine and chitinase are responsible mainly for degrading the cell wall of the pathogen. So, these are the three to four main uh, defensive response are trigger due to the pathogen recognition. So you can see, I will just giving uh, one or two examples of uh, biotropic pathogen and necrotropic pathogen. So in biotropic pathogen, they are infecting to the plant, which activate the salicylic acid mediated uh, defense line. So there will be increased the production of salicylic acid, which leads to expression of one gene that is non-expressor of pathogen related gene and which are mostly producing some PR protein like PR1, PR2, PR5 that is pathogen related protein and which are mostly responsible for inducing the systemic acquired resistance. On the other hand, if the necrotropic pathogen is infect to the plant cell, it the plant cell activate the jasmonic acid mediated pathway, defense pathway. So it increase the level of jasmonic acid in the plant, which activate one transcription factor that is MYC transcription factor. This MYC transcription factor having a group of genes which are mostly responsible for various cellular uh, development of the plant growth. Along with that, MYC, it will be induced the activation or expression of some pathogenic related protein like PR3, PR4 and PR12. And these PR3, 4 and 12 are mostly involved in local acquired resistance in the plant. Understood this? How the Biotropic pathogen will be involved in enhance or triggering the salicylic acid mediated defense line and how the necrotropic pathogen will be induce the jasmonic acid mediated defense response. So salicylic acid mediated activation of systemic aqua resistance, J mediated local induce the local acquired resistance so in this way uh, i uh, i have completed most of the interaction because the plant microbe interaction is very vast topic uh, so i will be only take i have already taken some few organism which are either beneficial or harmful to the plant. So these are some of the institute which are mostly used for culture collection. So these are the culture collection of either fungi or bacteria like National Chemical Laboratory, National Fungal Culture Collection as well as Microbial Culture Collection at the NCCS. Then microbial type culture collection in the, which is situated in the Chandigarh. So they all have are working on only on the microbes. So they are culturing microbes, identifying microbes and they are also providing 
uh, microbes for the research or industrial purpose. 